To start the dive into this very important topic, I'm gonna have to say two words that are gonna trigger some of you. Homeowners Association. For a great number of Americans, one of the most frustrating topics. I mean, it is a topic that could easily fill a 10 hour video of just horror story after horror story. There's so many stories out there in the world of petty tyrants with too much time on their hands, just ruining people's lives, to families facing the possibility of being excluded from their home because the community all of a sudden decided to become 55 plus. But what we're actually gonna be diving into is what may be an impending infrastructure structure crisis across America. Because as it turns out, HOAs are often not setting aside enough money for the maintenance that they're required to do. And this might come as a shock to a lot of people, but it is often the case that a lot of the infrastructure within an HOA's community is supposed to be maintained by them. And I don't mean the community items like pools and parks, but even basic stuff like roads and water treatment centers built exclusively for the HOA. Now this wasn't always the case and instead directly coincides with the meteoric rise in the number of HOAs plaguing this country over the past decade or so. Because in 2011, just 11% of new homes were under HOAs. But by 2022, it jumped to 66%, with developers often making deals with cities that the HOAs governing their new developments would handle the infrastructure in order to smooth over the approval process for getting new homes built. And this is where the trouble really starts. Right? We're getting to a point where many of these communities are needing regular maintenance on things like their roads, and suddenly they're finding, oh shit, we don't have cash for it. Like for example, the situation in West Virginia that Edward Airford, Director of Community Action at Strong Towns, talked about this year. You know, that town was collecting fees from homeowners for the normal things. Community upkeep, pool maintenance, and as far as everyone knew, money for regular maintenance. And after a few years, it was clear that the roads needed to be worked on only then for everyone to find out, oh, it's gonna cost $3 million to repave them. But the HOA, they only had a hundred grand on hand. Now in this situation, they could have levied a special assessment fee, which is essentially just telling everyone, surprise, you need to pay the difference. But the homeowners were actually lucky here because the city decided to handle it rather than deal with the political ramifications of angry voters. But in other instances, things can become far more messy, such as when an HOA is disbanded by a court order for failing to meet its obligations as one poor homeowner in Texas found out writing. My neighborhood was part of an HOA that was court ordered to dissolve years ago, but at that time, the county never took over the maintenance of the roads. In the years following, the roads have obviously completely turned into disrepair. This is leaving the neighborhood without adequate 911 services, utilities are constantly getting stuck or unable to perform their duties, etc. And stories like that, they're not uncommon, especially as cities don't want to take over the HOA's responsibility since that was the whole point of allowing it in the first place, especially if the roads are already screwed up. But then also, why does this happen so often? And I mean, one reason is that when HOAs are first set up, the developers themselves are on the board and often in control. And in order to entice would-be buyers, they keep HOA fees low, despite the fact that it would never be enough to actually cover key maintenance costs. And when eventually they no longer have properties to sell there and the HOAs are run by actual residents, few realize the financial pitfall that they're in or that this will even be a problem. And so this ends up being a classic problem of you should have read the fine text. Though also, pro tip, when buying a home, read literally every detail and know the HOA's rules inside and out before you buy. But then even in these situations, if a homeowner realizes there might be a problem, what can they do? Well, uh, unfortunately, not much. Generally speaking, you can demand for the financial reports from the association to see how the money is being spent. And then you could try to get the homeowners association board to raise fees to cover the cost if it's clear that there's not enough money in the bank for maintenance. So that obviously sucks for you because now you're paying more than you thought you'd have to. And even that is assuming the board didn't just ignore your request to look at statements. And in cases like that, or if there's clearly financial wrongdoing, residents will likely need to go to court. And from there, a bunch can happen. I mean, up to and including the board and HOA being dissolved entirely, albeit that being rare. But even there, you know, that doesn't solve the problem, right? I mean, we saw the situation in Texas where the city wasn't just going to pick up the tab for the roads. And a lot of the financial ignorance, that can happen in even otherwise well-run HOAs that have sensible rules and enforcement that help homeowners maximize value. Which is why Airford, who's generally pro-HOA, wants cities to pick up the tab. Although to be fair to him, he thinks the issue stems from before the HOA is even made. But this is all a cascading problem stemming from cities making agreements with developers to shift the responsibility of running parts of the city to local homeowners. And in return, they get to have a larger tax base without the responsibility that normally comes with them. Though at the same time, you could also argue this the other way around. Or with people saying the developers actually trick cities with promises that they knew wouldn't realistically be honored. Which is why with this, you know, I'll ask you what you think. And I don't mean about HOAs in general, though, feel free to share. I love a horror story or three. But specifically, you know, who do you think should ultimately be on the hook for things like these roads when things go belly up? 